Walking is actually an insanely impressive tool for weight loss and you don't need a gym to do it, but you do need some type of plan if you do wanna see best results. Today I'm sharing my 30 day walking for weight loss plan to help you tap into fat burning mechanisms and achieve your weight loss goal. My name's Autumn, I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance and today's video is sponsored by Element. More on them in a bit. Okay, so when walking is done the right way, it can help you to better burn fat as fuel and because walking is a lower intensity exercise, it's inherently going to be burning more fat as fuel versus something like cardio, which is a higher intensity exercise. Walking can also be done at pretty much any fitness level and any age. But also if you have a belly fat loss goal, walking, and especially if you can walk outside, has been found to lower the stress hormone cortisol. And high levels of cortisol are directly tied to weight gain around the belly. But you need to walk enough and at the right frequency throughout the day, especially if you wanna really maximize your results from walking. So my 30 day walking for weight loss plan doesn't actually technically include any rest days. Because walking is is a lower intensity exercise, you don't really need to be resting from it. Unlike strength training, where you don't wanna be doing that every single day, we actually start to see negative results. So the goal over the next 30 days is to build up the frequency and the volume that can then be maintained beyond that 30 days. This plan is perfect for beginners, but if you aren't a beginner, then you can just adjust the length of time for the walk throughout this plan. Okay, so let's dive into the first week. Here we're starting with the frequency groundwork. We're building the habits of how frequently you're going to be walking throughout the day, so how frequently you're going to get up, stand, and get some steps. So my 30-day plan has you physically getting up to stand and walk four times throughout the day. So the first walk that you're going to do is first thing in the morning, preferably before you've eaten anything. During this time is when you're technically fasted and if you're using intermittent fasting, you can kind of double down on those weight loss perks. But even if you're not following intermittent fasting, you can at least get this walk in in a fasted state, which means your body's already primarily burning fat as fuel and therefore you're just further tapping into this. The second time you're going to walk will be roughly around mid morning. So depending on when you wake up, this could be about 10 or 11 a.m. This helps to break up the work day, get some movement in, especially if you've been stagnant and sitting throughout the work day. The third time you're going to get up and walk is at your lunch break, or if you don't have time during your lunch break after work. But if you're able to get it in during your lunch break, I would recommend that. And then the fourth time will be after dinner. This is very strategic so that you can walk when it's dark out, you can expose your eyes to darkness, which is really helpful for improving the sleep hormone melatonin and helping you to get the deep rest that you need after all of the exercise that you're getting throughout the day. So each of these four walks is only 10 minutes during this first week. Five minutes out, turn around, five minutes back. If you're not a beginner, then I would recommend upping this to 30 minutes for the first and the third walk. Now, before we move on to week two, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Element. Especially with all this walking, and if you aren't used to it, you might notice that you're experiencing a little bit of muscle cramps. This is usually from water loss and electrolyte loss, so it's really important to make sure that you're balancing your electrolyte levels and hydrating. Element is an electrolyte company that's zero sugar and has the sodium, the magnesium, and the potassium to help balance out the lost electrolytes. And because it doesn't have any sugar, it makes it a much better option for a weight loss goal than those other really sugary electrolyte drinks. Element also comes in a ton of different, really tasty flavors. They have their raspberry salt, their citrus salt, mango chili and lemon habanero, and then even their unflavored option. Element is also really easy to use. They come in these little packets. So all you have to do is tear open the packet, dump it in about 16 to 32 ounces of water, give it a shake and you're ready to go. I would try and time having the electrolytes after your first morning walks after that fasted walk so that you can make sure you start the day in an electrolyte balanced state. And right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. It's a really great way to test out all eight flavors so you can get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash autumn. It's only available through my link. So make sure to check out D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T.com forward slash autumn. The link is in the description down below. Okay, now we get into week two of the walking plan. And this is where we're going to start to increase the length of time for each walk, or rather for two of the walks. So we're still keeping that four time of getting up and walking schedule, but now we're just starting to bump up how long a few of those walks are. So we're going to increase the time to 20 minutes for two of those walks, and I recommend that being the first and the third walk. So your morning walk and your lunch break walk. It's usually easier to get in first thing in the morning, and I've just found that I personally feel so much more energized when I get a longer walk in first thing in the morning. So since this is a 20 minute walk, all you're looking at is 10 minutes out, turn 
around 10 minutes back. And then we're keeping the second and fourth block the same at just 10 minutes. Okay, week three is where things switch up a little bit. During this week, we're not only going to increase the length of one of your walks, we're also going to add in these mini stand-ups. So it's the same exact schedule, the four times you're getting up, but we're increasing the first walk. So just the first walk to 30 minutes. So that's 15 minutes out, 15 minutes back. But there's also one more addition here, and that's every hour of the work day, you're also going to make sure that you're getting at least 250 steps. That equates to about one to two minutes of walking. It's really not that much, but it does seriously add up. So over an eight hour period of time throughout the workday, getting that 250 steps adds up to an extra 2000 steps every single day. That's an extra 14,000 steps a week that you're getting just by getting one to two minutes of walking every hour. Which if you have a step tracker, I'm not wearing mine right now because I wave my hands a lot when I'm talking and I get like 2000 steps from filming a video. <laughs> but if you have a step tracker, it will alert you when you need to stand up if you haven't hit those 250 steps for that hour. I use a Fitbit. I'll have the one that I use linked down description below. I really like that it reminds me every hour to get up. It's amazing how just even walking around my house or the office or whatever it is for that one to two minutes every hour helps my body feel so much more energized and really significantly adds in the steps. I mean, if you work in an office space, this could literally be you getting up and just going to the bathroom or getting up and filling up your water. 250 steps really isn't that much. Okay, week four. So for our final week, we're going to increase the length one more time. And we're going to actually take that third walk and increase it to 30 minutes as well. So that's that lunchtime or after work walk. So your daily schedule by week four will now look like this. Your first morning walk in that fasted state will be 30 minutes. The second walk will just be a quick 10 minute walk. The third walk will be a 30 minute lunchtime walk, which is actually really great for digestion to get up and walk after you've eaten. And then the fourth walk, you're going to do that 10 minute evening walk after you've eaten dinner. And then throughout the day, if you didn't already hit 250 steps for each hour, then you're just going to get up, stretch your legs and move around a little bit. It sounds like a lot, but it's surprisingly really easy fits into even a busy schedule. This is actually pretty much my exact walking schedule every day. And I find that it makes me really energized, feel so much more focused when I come back from these walks and get back to working. And of course, help to make sure that you're adding even more steps in. Depending on your pace, this schedule should be about 10,000 to 12,000 steps that you're going to be getting in each day. But you also really wanna make sure that you're avoiding super common walking mistakes that could be holding you back from achieving your goals. You can check out this video next with those details. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love the science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all right guys thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video